Coronary artery disease develops when the major blood vessels, coronary arteries, or supply your heart with blood, oxygen, nutrients, become damaged or diseased. Cholesterol containing deposits or plaque in the arteries and inflammation are usually to blame for coronary artery disease. CAD is considered a mismatched disease as in the past humans had to hunt and gather for food while expending energy to obtain this food but today with industrialization humans can obtain foods by simply driving to the grocery store without having to burn near as much energy. So the major risk factors for coronary artery disease are diabetes, cigarette smoking, hypertension or high blood pressure, elevated low density lipoprotein, reduced high density lipoprotein, advancing age, abdominal obesity, and decreased physical, physical activity. So in this figure we see the normal physiology. So in the normal physiology there are three layers to the um, blood vessel. One, the first layer is the tunica externa, the next layer is the tunica media, the next layer is the tunica intima which is the innermost layer, and then eventually we have the open space or the lumen. And it's this luminal space that is damaged in coronary artery disease. Now I'm going to be talking about the pathophysiology which involves the formation of arteroma. Arteroma usually develops because of damage to the inner uh, layer of the endothelium. So there is a damage here. And as a result, cholesterol, which are these, uh, macrophages, and uh, low density lipoprotein plus other debris, they start to accumulate at the site. Then the high concentration of LDL penetrates the damaged endothelium, which is what we are looking at here and undergo chemical process called oxidation. The altered LDL then attracts leukocytes to the site and the macrophages appear, which are these macrophages, they all appear and they engulf the lipoprotein and become foam cells. As you can see here, the foam cells are beginning to form. These foam cells give rise to the earliest visible form of arteriomal lesion called the fatty streak. Um, here, these are the fatty streak that has formed. Once the fatty streak is formed, it then attracts smooth muscles into the site where they multiply and they start to produce um, extracellular matrix comprising of collagen, um, proteoglycan, and then the extracellular matrix forms a large portion of the atherosclerotic plaque, which is this. This is the atherosclerotic plaque. The fatty streak turns into fibrous plaque. The lesion then starts to bulge into the inner wall of the lumen or the inner wall of the blood vessel causing a significant narrowing of the luminal space. The fibrous plaque which is what we have here starts to support itself by developing its own blood vessel which is what we have here in a process called angiogenesis. The fibrous plaque then calcifies as a result of calcium that is deposited in the area. The final plaque is, is made up of a type of fibrous tissues covering a core that is rich in lipid as well as necrotic and dead cells. The edge of the cap of the fibrous tissue is key in acute coronary artery disease because it is prone to rupture and hence exposes underlying core of lipids and necrotic materials to thrombogenic factors in the blood. Symptoms related to pathophysiology. In stable angina, the club arteries, as you can see here, uh, is still providing the heart muscles with oxygen at rest. However, the problem arises when your heart rate increases, such as when exercising, you feel a strangling chest pain called angina pectoris. When you reduce exertion, such as when resting, the chest pain goes away. If proper treatment is not provided, the problem can get more complicated and the person can develop acute coronary syndrome. As you can see on the diagram here, this is what happened in unstable angina. The plaque can rupture under certain circumstances such as high blood pressure. This exposed plaque material, which is very thrombogenic in nature, uh, will form blood clot, as you can see the blood clot here. So part of the plaque wall can get ruptured and uh, flap back and forth. Whenever it uh, flap uh, back and forth, it can completely occlude 
the vessel at that instant the person can get a an angina even at rest in heart attack the blood clot foam previously on the plague gets so big that it occludes the it occludes the coronary artery completely and as you can see here this is the formation of the thrombus or this thrombus can completely break off and travel downstream in a process called embol embolism and it can completely occlude a downstream blood vessels and that's resulting in a heart attack key concept homeostasis homeostasis is comprising uh, in cardiac muscles function because the cor coronary artery is blocked this will prevent the heart muscles from receiving enough oxygen and nutrients to function properly concerning cell membrane uh, damage to the endothelial of the coronary artery initiate the formation of a plaque leading to the formation of the ateroma and uh, protein with elevated levels of low density lipoprotein the plaque is able to take shape and eventually damage the artery inflammatory agents also aid in developing the plaque as they inflame the site of the plaque